let's see. So my talk is called GPUs must be shared, but they cannot be shared. So I'll explain to you what this means in a bit. So I'm from Alto University in, or actually close to Helsinki. I work for what's basically our HPC group, but we do, I do a lot of different things. No one really knows what each of us does. So we have two Jupyter hubs here, one for high performance computing stuff. It's basically on our cluster integrated with Slurm using batch spawner. And basically my philosophy here is you should make a, the cluster easier to use, not make a separate service that's different from the cluster. Also, we have a Jupyter Hub for teaching, which is using Kubernetes and all that stuff. So really, these two things are basically like what you've been hearing about for the past few days. So OK, so Jupyter. It's easy to search CPUs and memory. So basically, uh, you, know, you have the head node CPU. Are you sharing you... your slides or? No, I don't have any slides. OK, perfect. Yeah. OK, so it's easy to share CPUs and memory. So CPUs, well, that's what processors have done for decades now. Memory, uh, basically, same thing. But from what we can tell, GPUs cannot be shared. So GPUs don't have memory isolation. So I should say I'm not a GPU expert here. So if someone can correct me and everyone else here that would be great. So because GPUs don't have good memory isolation, they can only be assigned to one person at a time. So that's not good for Jupyter use because basically people will start up a notebook and start doing some stuff and then it will work and work and work and you know they do something and then they wait five minutes while they're debugging and do something else and so on and it's just hugely inefficient. So with the uh, processors memory that's fine but not for GPUs so we don't have GPUs available in either of our Jupyter hubs yet it's our primary request so people are always asking you know can we get GPUs and we want to say yes but we just don't know how to do it without wasting huge amounts of resources so we were thinking 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 until eventually my colleague comes up with this quote and realizes GPUs cannot be shared but they must be shared so that got me thinking. So, okay, you know, actually he's onto something here. So we can't just, um, you know, think of this like something normal. We have to really think about what does it even mean to share a GPU or one of these resources. So we have to redefine sharing. So how can we share these resources? So I should clarify that the traditional way of Jupyter sharing would be to you know, spawn everything on a single node, um, restrict the number of people that can be on there. Everyone has a lot of processors or memory, and that's just, you know, well, the amount people need is less than the amount that's available, and it mostly works out, except when it doesn't, and then you just deal with it and kill someone or something. Or, you know, spawn them in Slurm and give them dedicated resources. So actually, we spawned them in Slurm, but on a special interactive partition, which is purposely oversubscribed by a lot. Uh, OK. Um, let's see. So yeah, OK, so how can we share things? So I was thinking, we can share it by notebook. So basically, people have the notebook, and they go and um, you know, test it, debug it. There's some magic command or something which submits the notebook to a batch queue. It runs on the GPU and then gives you the results back. And you see those results and then you do debugging and then you submit it again. And you can even, when you're done, you can save all the state from this notebook and get it back and then play with the variables and stuff that comes out. Or you can just share it by cell where you have some code that ships the contents of a single cell to another batch queue, like Slurm or whatever it is. It runs on the GPU and then sends the state back and gets reload, reloaded. So this would ideally involve serializing all the state of the notebook, sending it to the other side, deserializing it, running, reserializing the output, sending it back, 
deserializing it and loading it back into your notebook. I also heard a rumor. Can you at, turn your video back um, on again? Sorry. Turn my video? Yeah, turn your video back on. Well, I try to, but it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Okay, can you, sorry, can you try okay. to get the sound clicky? So we tried turning the yeah. video off to see if that would help. It, it didn't. <laughs> okay, you're back on. Is the, is the audio quality really bad? Yeah, yeah, pretty bad. We can hear you. Mm. Yeah, well, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it works, let's go on. So, yeah, I heard a rumor that someone's developed a thing which can take a GPU device, add it to a container, allow it to be used, and then remove it from the container dynamically while it's running. So, yeah, so my question is basically. How can we share GPUs? Which of these do you think will work? So I started working on something called Notebook Script, which works on the notebook-based sharing, where it would basically run the notebook like a shell script or something like that. There's plenty of ways to run notebooks non-interactively, but personally, all of them seem like hacking on interactive running from notebooks not making the running a first-class citizen. Uh, we just saw the lightning talk about taking single cells data and sending it to a remote site to execute and come back. Also, one of my colleagues has made something which tries to see, basically do what I said. I haven't actually tested it myself, but it would be trivial to make this work with Slurm if it does what he says it does. The container thing, I don't know. So any ideas, any thoughts? What do you think? I'll say that at least, at least for us, we're just kind of content to let users hold on to the GPU. Um, is it, is it it's, yeah. it's just because the duty cycle on the GPU is expected to be so low in your, in your use case? Basically, so we expect people to spawn the notebook servers and leave it running for ages without using it. Of course, we can um, reclaim the server once when it's idle, but that's not very nice for the users and well, you know, still yeah. it's, the efficiency is quite low. And there's right. always to throw money at the problem just buy tons of um, tons more stuff or have the users pay for what they want to keep the lock on, but you know, there has to be a better way. You might be audible if you talk loud because they're ceiling mic. So yeah, yeah. You see the mic bouncing, then it's picking up something. So we have some, a little bit of this, um, mostly with the virtual machine. So with the VFIO pass-through stuff and various IMO, IMO, IMO video groups or whatever it is, it's letting us partition up cards. So the, the, the actual physical hardware we can partition up amongst more things. But what you were talking about with the Magic dynamically adding and removing GPUs would be the gold standard. I don't think I know of anything that does that, but if anybody does, it would be extremely interesting to hear. No. And really, I'm not convinced that this dynamically adding and removing GPUs will even work in practice. So everyone will have to train their code to release the GPU whenever it is done, like basically at the cell level. So you run, claim the GPU, release it, and I don't really believe or know if I should believe that people will make code that's well behaved enough like that. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my basic goal right now is this scripting thing. So basically train users to make your notebook so it's a self-contained script, basically. So you can use it interactively for debugging, but it equally well can be submitted to batch to run, which is going to be good even without GPUs, but we can pack it into providing GPUs here also. All right. So I think we can potentially, if people have ideas, we're happy to, are you going to be on the call? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I posted a topic in the Discord, so you can reply there too. Thank you. 
No. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks a lot. Have fun at lunch. Bye.